Common Dermatologic Procedures with Jack E. Sieben, MD, featuring the Hypercator 2000. The procedures depicted in this training video utilize the Hyfricator by ConMed Corporation, a new standard of technology marking the advent of the 21st century. The Hyfricator 2000 is a product of over 60 years of development and service. Safe and simple to use, the Hyfricator 2000 has a wide range of applications, from dermatology and gynecology to ophthalmology and urology. The Hyfricator 2000's state-of-the-art electronic circuitry utilizes two microprocessors to provide unsurpassed output power and patient safety. One microprocessor controls the output and functionality of the system, while the second terminates activation if a safety hazard is detected. Internal self-diagnostic tests are performed every time you turn on the Hyfricator 2000, and the power output is monitored continuously during operation. This makes the Hyfricator 2000 one of the safest office-based electrosurgery units in the world. Whether it's full power for broad surface coagulation or low power for delicate facial procedures, the Hyfricator 2000 provides the precision you demand, giving a reliable, reproducible energy output with the exact same current each time you use a particular setting. Power changes are delivered right to your fingertips through the remote control buttons located conveniently on the pencil. A patient plate has been added for increased power applications. Combining sophisticated control with practical function, the Hyfricator 2000 will enhance your skills in a wide range of electrosurgical techniques, instilling confidence in you and your patients. Let us meet Jack E. Sieben, MD, Associate Clinical Professor of Dermatology at the University of California, Davis, and author of the book Cutaneous Electrosurgery, as well as numerous articles on electrosurgical modalities. In the following series of procedures, I will demonstrate the correct clinical application of the Hyfricator Plus in a number of electrosurgical techniques. Specifically, I'll cover the treatment of telangiectasias, skin tags, seborrheic keratoses and warts, nevi, or normal moles, and treatment of skin cancers. In each segment, I'll describe the specific technique and explain those elements which are critical to the successful application of this modality. First, some general points. All electrosurgical electrodes used for patient treatment should be either disposable or, if not, sterilized after use to prevent patient-to-patient -patient transfer of infectious organisms, including hepatitis B virus, human immunodeficiency virus, and other pathogenic microorganisms. The electrolase disposable electrodes are designed for use in the hyfricator and provide a convenient way of avoiding contamination. On all procedures, the power setting should be as low as possible to achieve the desired effect without excessive tissue destruction. While higher power settings may appear to work more quickly, they may actually produce less efficient electrical desiccation and electrical coagulation by charring the tissue, which interferes with further electrical desiccation and destruction. In addition, a thick eschar that results from an excessively high power setting may be prone to dislodge and bleed. Now, let's look at the Hyfricator Plus in action. In this first procedure, I'll demonstrate the treatment of telangiectasias. Most telangiectatic blood vessels are very small and require the use of a delicate electrode. For most applications, the fine point of the sharp electrolase disposable electrode is quite satisfactory. However, some physicians prefer the more delicate tip of the epilation electrode. A low power setting from 0 to 3 watts usually works very well for telangiectatic blood vessels of the face. The majority of the telangiectatic blood vessels will occur in the sensitive area of the mid-face. It is best to introduce the sensation of treatment to the patient in a less sensitive area. You should look for one or two isolated telangiectatic blood vessels that are located more peripherally on the face, possibly on the lateral cheek or chin. After these are treated, the patient knows what to expect and is not quite so alarmed when the treatment is administered to a much more sensitive area, such as the nose. You should place your hands against the patient for stability. If the patient moves slightly, the treating hand will move in unison. If you have a very small area of skin contact with the patient while applying current, 
both you and the patient may feel heat or a harmless shock. You won't feel a shock or a sensation of heat if the area of skin contact is relatively large, over two square centimeters, because it distributes current flow over a larger surface area. The patient should not make contact with grounded objects such as metal exam table rails while current is being applied. The risk of tissue damage is minimal, but a small area of skin contact could produce a slight shock. Most patients tolerate the procedure better if the electrode is first placed against the proposed treatment site just prior to activating the current. The initial contact will alert the patient to the specific treatment site and eliminate any surprise. When mid-facial telangiectetic vessels are treated without anesthesia, there is often reflex tearing in the eyes. The patient should be warned that this is normal. You might want to provide a facial tissue to blot the eyes. A majority of physicians treat telangiectetic vessels of face using the finger switch on the electrode pin to activate current. Many physicians prefer to use a foot switch because they can tap the switch quickly for a short burst of current and there is no accidental movement of the hand holding the electrode. Spider angiomas require special attention. They consist of a central feeding vessel that may present a slightly raised papule up to one millimeter in diameter and a radiating pattern of smaller vessels around it. Treatment is more effective if the central feeding vessel is collapsed during current activation. Compress the lesion under the electrode until it appears to blanch, then activate the current for a slightly longer interval, perhaps up to one half second. Take care, however, because if the current is activated for too long, there's a slight risk of a pitted scar. After treating telangiectasias, the treated areas of the skin usually develop a pink blush, which typically resolves in a few minutes. A slightly larger welt may develop, but it usually resolves after a few minutes or sometimes a few hours. By the next day, most patients will see only that the number of blood vessels have diminished. The treatment sites require no special care. The skin may be washed with ordinary soap and water, but the area should not be scrubbed too hard for a few days. The site may be covered with makeup as soon as the patient desires. Numerous small skin tags may be treated very quickly using the Hyphicator Plus at low power settings. You apply the current to the tag for one half second or less. The tag will blanch, but does not fall off. You can tell the patient to expect the lesion to dry up and fall off over the next few days. For lesions up to one to two millimeters in size, a current activation of one to three watts is applied for less than one second, so no anesthesia is required. Small lesions that are obviously skin tags may be simply treated as shown. However, if something appears unusual about the tag, or if it is particularly large, you should remove the lesion with a shave excision to provide a specimen for biopsy. In removing the seborrheic keratosis, we first inject the area with xylocaine. You'll feel a little stick here. Just beneath the lesion, we inject this raises a wheel that elevates the lesion, providing instant anesthesia and hemostasis. Once that wheel is seen immediately around the lesion, a shave biopsy can be performed. It's always good to perform a biopsy so that we can establish that it is, in fact, simply a seborrheic keratosis and not a malignancy. I do not attempt to remove the entire lesion with the shave excision. I just remove the superficial component. If we cut too deep, we may violate the dermis and leave a hypertrophic scar. So we perform most of our damage to the lesion using the hyphricator at a medium-low power setting, usually the range of 3 to 8 watts. By performing electrodesiccation, we define a plane of separation. Once the entire area is treated, it usually separates quite easily by performing sponge curatage, and the lesion is simply wiped away. As that's performed, there may be a few residual bleeding points or residual fragments of seborrheic keratosis which can be lightly electrodesiccated, usually at a lower wattage, to minimize scarring. Lesions larger than one centimeter may require anesthesia with a small field block by injecting 1% zotacaine with epinephrine around the periphery of the lesion. The treatment of viral warts is similar to treatment of seborrheic keratoses. However, the warts tend to penetrate more deeply into the dermis and may require a slightly deeper electrodesiccation and curatage. 
one must be cautious about curating too deep into the dermis because of the closely associated underlying nerves and blood vessels. Most benign appearing pigment nevi can be very adequately treated by a shave excision followed by light electrodesiccation of the base. If the diagnosis is uncertain or if the nevus appears suspicious for malignant degeneration, a complete full thickness excision is superior to the technique of shave excision combined with electrodesiccation. Features raising suspicion for malignancy include asymmetry, an irregular or notched border, significant color variation, or a diameter greater than six millimeters. Anesthesia is best obtained by raising a small wheel immediately beneath the nevus. In this case, we're doing two side by side. The anesthesia is obtained almost instantly. The nevus is then removed by shave excision. In the process of excision, sometimes a small lip of tissue will be left at the distal side of the excision area. First, we electrodesiccate to control the bleeding. This also destroys the residual nevus cells using the hyphricator at a fairly low power setting from two to six watts. We have a little bit of lip of residual tissue, which can be electrodesiccated, and this can be curated away by using the scalpel held perpendicular to the skin surface or oftentimes it can be simply wiped away using the gauze sponge. Pale cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma in sun exposed areas are not prone to metastasize and can often be treated quite successfully by curatage and electrodesiccation. The lesions best suited for this form of treatment are located on the flat skin areas of the face, neck, and extremities. This form of treatment should not be used for skin cancers in the fold areas of the face, particularly those fold areas around the nose, the eyes, the ears, and the mouth. In such areas, tumors often send a deeper root into the dermis that will not be identified in curatage. Lesions in these areas should be deeply excised. This clinically apparent bale cell carcinoma will be removed by curatage and electrodesiccation. We'll first inject the area by injecting around the periphery of the lesion, as well as beneath the lesion. After we have obtained adequate anesthesia, we'll perform a superficial shave excision. This is not an attempt to remove the entire carcinoma. It'll just be a superficial removal if the site is to be treated by curatage and desiccation, a shave biopsy should be performed rather than a punch biopsy. A punch biopsy will place a hole in the dermis and will make it difficult to define the plane of tumor against the dermis. After we've removed the lesion, we'll now treat this with curatage. As a curatage is being performed, we should provide counter-traction with the index finger against the direction of curatage. Because the pockets of tumor may go in multiple directions, the curatage should be performed in four quadrants or four directions. The curatage should be performed initially prior to the electrodesiccation. After all visible tumor components are removed by curatage, you should electrodesiccate the entire base with a power setting from 3 to 10 watts. And then we'll repeat the cycle of curatage. For the usual basal cell carcinoma, we'll perform three cycles of electrodesiccation and curatage. As an added precaution, electrodesiccate an additional two or three millimeters around the clinically apparent margin of the lesion. 
now we'll perform our final, our third episode of curatage. And then a final electrodesiccation to seal over any potential bleeders. The success of curatage and electrodesiccation in the treatment of skin cancer rests on the characteristics of the skin cancer being soft and easily definable with a curette. If the tumor is recurrent or in scar tissue, it will be more deeply embedded in the skin and less identifiable by curatage. You should treat such lesions by complete excision. And use curatage and electrodesiccation with caution in areas prone to hypertrophic scarring, such as the mid anterior chest, shoulders, and upper back. The Hyphcator Plus enables the physician to administer a wide range of electrosurgical treatments quickly and conveniently in an office environment. While demonstrations such as those you just saw offer some practical guidance, nothing substitutes for experience. Laboratory exercises on material that resembles human tissue, such as a quarter pound of lean flank steak, can help you perfect your techniques and your familiarity with various power settings. Hyphcator Plus can be an effective tool for the physician but only in the practice hand can it perform its full potential. It is very rewarding to treat patients with these localized dermatologic lesions. The treatments are effective and efficient, and the patient is usually quite pleased with the ease of removal. A well-designed instrument such as a Hyphricator Plus allows us to maximize our efficiency as a valuable asset to dermatologic surgery. Combining the precision and convenience of remote fingertip control, a reliable reproducible energy form, and dual microprocessor technology, the Hyfricator 2000 gives you the capabilities to perform a larger number and variety of procedures in less time and with greater ease than ever before. From ConMed Corporation, the leader in office-based electrosurgery for over 60 years, the Hyfricator 2000 brings to you a new standard of technology marking the advent of the 21st century.